Good evening and welcome to NYC Arts. I'm Philippe de Montebello at the Tisch WNET Studios at Lincoln Center. Season after season, the Metropolitan Opera presents both engaging premieres and treasured favorites on its grand stage. This year, there is a notable first in its history. Soprano Sandra Radvanovsky has taken on an operatic feat not attempted since Beverly Sills performed with the New York City Opera in the 1970s. Considered one of the finest singing actresses today, Ms. Radvanovsky has taken on the challenge of performing the role of all three queens in the Tudor trilogy of operas. Anna Bolena concerns the fall and death of England's Queen Anne Boleyn, second wife of Henry VIII. Maria Stuarda explores the final days and the execution of Mary, Queen of Scots. And lastly, Roberto Devreux portrays the tragic relationship between Queen Elizabeth I and the nobleman she loved. NYC Arts went behind the scenes of this Triple Crown adventure, which reveals a very human dimension of Tudor history. Having a unique voice, people automatically recognize it. People know it's me. I say oftentimes that the greatest gift I could ever be given is sitting in the opera house listening to myself singing on stage because then I could actually hear what other people hear because recordings it's just not the same. To have that visceral feeling of the voice actually hitting you in a theater and, and what that feels like. So the, the Tudor trilogy is three operas that are about the life and times of Elizabeth I. So that's why they call it the Queen Trilogy or the Tudor Trilogy. All three operas composed by Gaetano Donizetti, an Italian composer, in the bel canto style, which means beautiful singing, literally. But all very dramatic and all telling stories, some of it real, some of it not, about these three women uh, throughout their history. I think I am correct in saying that only one other person has ever done all three of these queens in one season, and that was Beverly Sills at New York City Opera. Um, no one has ever here at the Metropolitan Opera done all three of the queens. The way I'm doing it is, is truly one overlaps with the next, overlaps with the next. And I feel slightly like Sybil at the moment. <laughs> But um, it's, it's really helpful in a way to do them back to back because we are doing them in the historically accurate way. So we start with Anna Bolena, which is the story of Anne Boleyn, where we are then introduced to Elizabeth I in that opera. Anne Boleyn was sent to the Tower of London by Henry VIII for treason. He accused her of having an affair just to get rid of her. Elizabeth, unfortunately, was there. That's probably why she was just such a traumatized child. She saw her mother get her head cut off. I mean, oh. Then we move on to Maria Stuarda, which is about Mary Stuart, Queen of Scots, and her cousin, Elizabeth I. Elizabeth is accusing Mary of killing her ex-husbands and her lovers, and she's just pushing, Elizabeth is pushing all the buttons for Mary. And Mary, rightfully, should have been the queen because she was in the proper lineage. Anyway, set the scene, Mary has had enough. And she finally says to Elizabeth, you can't talk to me like that. I should be queen. You are the bastard child of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn. I'm queen. And 
And then the last one is Roberto Devereux about the end of Elizabeth's life. The reason why all the portraits that we see of Elizabeth is white is because she had a terrible complexion. So being the queen, they made her just with this porcelain white on her face to cover up all the blemishes. So after a while of caking on this white, you're going to see cracks in it, as one sees cracks in Elizabeth in this opera too. So there's that whole correlation. <laughs> No wonder Queen Elizabeth had a limp. Those costumes probably ruined her back. Unbelievable. The challenges is, is making the translation from what's inside a designer or a director's mind. Uh, we, had, we had looked at so much research, and part of it is collecting part of that research and then transforming into something that's, that's original, um, but yet sort of has the feel of the period. This is the Elizabeth that we see in Roberto Devereux. In this opera, she's at the end of her life. And the fabulous hair up. She had very big costumes, very heavy costumes. I love the period, but whoa. She is tired of the facade of royalty, of nobility, mm. of pomp and circumstance of the weight of the world on her shoulders, truly the whole world on her shoulders. She doesn't want it anymore. And the one last hope of any kind of love with Roberto Devereux. I think the opera is called Roberto Devereux because this is the central problem that the Queen has to deal with in this particular piece, the problem of Devereux. Does she put him to death? Does she let him go? And will she find out who his real lover is? And she remembers, of course, we've had a, a kind of a love affair. I mean, I don't believe we, we ever, I don't think we ever slept together. But I've been one of the ones who has been in her favor for years and years. He also denies her. And I think it broke her. And you see at the end a broken woman. And historically, she died standing up. She wouldn't sit down, she wouldn't eat, she wouldn't go to the washroom, she was done. She just stood. And that's how she died, how terrible, unbelievable. get somebody like Sandra whose voice is like a force of nature I mean uh, she opens her mouth and this glorious sound comes out and the way it comes inside of the character who she is and I always pray that I can raise my own level to be as deeply embedded inside of a character vocally as she is, especially in this part. I was very fortunate in Richmond, Indiana, where I lived at the time that my choir director and her husband were great musicians and great lovers of the human voice and really pulled my mom and dad aside and said, that girl, sorry, they were great people and they said she was given a gift. 
and I thank them every day of my life. I always wanted to sing with Placido Domingo because he was tr truly my idol growing up. And I became an opera singer because I saw Placido Domingo on TV. And I said to Placido, you know, my lifelong dream was to sing with you. And he said, he said, well, you need a new dream, Sandra. So here now I have this dream fulfilled and I'm, I'm at a loss for what I'm going to do next. I really am. It's, it's impossible to top this. It's just unbelievable.